Okay, in this lecture, I will talk about something to do with the topic fast Fourier transform. And specifically, here we're talking about informal development of the fast Fourier transform. So this way, I hope that will be easier for the audience to understand the difficult topic, which is fast Fourier transform. So let's talk about informal development of fast Fourier transform. According to the previous lecture, if you look back into the equation 23 and equation 24 of the previous lectures, basically the story goes like this. Any periodic function f can be expressed in terms of the exponential form together with the unknown complex constant C tilde n, where according to equation 2, you have to compute the unknown complex constant C tilde n. And that unknown can be done or can be computed based on equation 1. Okay? Now, instead of expressing the function f as a function of time, according to the previous lecture, if you remember, we tried to discretize the time at a certain specific value, like we call time k. So, f sub k, it means the function value corresponding to the time t sub k. That's what it means. So in general, the way it works is like this. You know, let's say you are given, or you know the function f is a function of time. So corresponding to the time t1, t2, t3, or let's say tk in general. tk corresponding to k, all right? You can measure the function value f at those discrete time k. So that vector f, you know the numerical value. So the question becomes, how do you express that function f in terms of the exponential form e and in terms of the unknown c tilde n? Well, the formula to calculate the unknown c tilde n is given according to equation 1 right there. So if you look at carefully at equation 1, you can see very clearly we have no problem in general, in, in principle, to calculate c tilde n. Why? The reason is because we know the value f at a, some specific time k. And we also know everything about e raised to that power. So in principle, it should not be a problem. The only problem is this. If you want to calculate c tilde sub n, this n in here could be 1, 2, 3, up to capital N, okay, minus 1. And therefore, corresponding to each value of a small n here, you have to do the summation on the index k. And that means for the different value of n, you have to do the summation on the index k again and again and again, and therefore the process to calculate c tilde n shown in equation 1 could be very expensive, which I can show you very, very soon. Now, in, according to equation 1 and 2, the index n and k, they are the integer, and they can go from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to, let's say, n minus 1 is shown in the summation sign. Now, in order to explain easier, let me introduce the new notation. Suppose we define the new variable capital W is defined as E raised to the power minus I 2 pi over capital N as indicated in equation 4. 
So let's say, suppose we define capital A, W, as defined as E raised to that power minus I to pi over capital N. Now, if that is the case, then the next thing we ask ourselves, what happens if we raise both sides of that equation by the power capital N? In other words, what happens if you put W raised to the power N equal to what? Well, if that is the case, that means you have to raise to the power N on both sides. Okay? And based on our knowledge, we say on the right hand side, when you raise to the power N, these two guys cancel out. So all you have left is minus I raised to the power 2 pi. This is what you have on the right hand side. Okay? So, based on the definition that W is equal to E raised to the power minus I 2 pi divided by capital N, we conclude that W raised to the power capital N should be equal to E raised to the power minus I 2 pi. However, we can also say that this term turn out to be equal to 1. And the reason is because you can use Euler identity. For example, according to the so-called Euler identity, we know E raised to the power minus I 2 pi can be expressed as cosine of 2 pi minus I times psi of 2 pi, according to Euler identity. And we know that sine of 2 pi is equal to 0. And cos of 2 pi is equal to 1. And that's why we say E raised to that power is equal to 1. So in other words, based on the way we define of the parameter W, as I show you in equation 4, we conclude that W raised to the power n is equal to 1. Okay, so with the definition of W like that, let's move on to the next slide. With that definition, then the parameter C tilde n, this is supposed to be the unknown that we want to figure it out, by the way, can be expressed according to the new notation related to W as I indicated in equation 5. Okay? So basically, how do you get equation 5? How do you get this equation 5? Very simple. You just go back to the definition of C tilde n on the previous slide. You see? So you take a look at equation 1. That is the definition of C tilde n. And then we make use of the definition of W. We can express this guy, that term right there, in terms of W. And that is exactly what you have on the next slide. That term right there is W raised to the power nk. OK, so that is what we have. Uh, now, how about how do you get the formula to compute, let's say, f sub k? Well, f sub k is given by the second formula right there that I show you. How do you get the second equation for f sub k? Again, you just go back to the previous slide. And you can see f sub k can be computed based on equation 2. So you take a look at equation 2, and again, you express this term e to that power, making use of the definition of w then immediately equation 2 can help you to figure out f sub k, which is shown right there. Okay? The only difference is you express that in terms of w now. Okay, let's take a look at some specific